Hi there, my name is Catherine Persky and I have a question for Richard this morning. You know, the Hamptons have an enormously rich artistic history and heritage. And I'm wondering if in honor of Women's History Month, you can tell us something about some of the notable female artists who have resided in the Hamptons, particularly in the East Hampton area. We're here looking at the life of Maud Sherwood Jewett, a sculptor who spent a great deal of time in East Hampton, particularly as a summer colonist. She was like many women of her generation, from women who were born uh, in the late 1800s and matured as artists in the early 1900s. But she in particular, her life is pretty much lost in the history books about American art. But her sculptures, particularly those designed for gardens, can be seen at the Cleveland Museum of Art. One of them is on display behind our building here at the Osborne Jackson House. It's a full-size uh, sculpture in bronze of Pan. And many other nude nymphs that appear regulate auction houses. Some of her small sculptures, uh, tabletop, that are less than 12 inches high, uh, currently are bringing over $10,000, but still, she's just a small paragraph in only a few books on American art history. She was born in Englewood, New Jersey, to Colonel John D. and Emmeline Sherwood. Her father was a Yale and Harvard-educated lawyer and author. He retired early from his practice of law and devoted himself to writing books, including a comic history of the United States, which he published under a pseudonym, Harry Scratchley. As a girl, she went to museums, authors came to visit, went to the opera, so she had a wonderful background of culture and all men in many, many different ways. She was strongly interested in the visual arts and started studying at the Art Students League of New York. And her teacher was a renowned American female artist. Harriet Whitney Frismuth. Uh, she was one of the most famous sculptors for garden fountains, um, oftentimes uh, incorporating nymphs, uh, pan, other figures, children playing, and the fountain would often be lined with frogs. It would be spitting water into the center of the fountain. So some people used to call her the frog sculptor, but she is dearly beloved and is represented in many, many museums. And I presume that because she was her teacher, that Maud was so influenced by her that she became a sculptor and she specialized in garden uh, objects in particular. She met her future husband, stockbroker Edward Jewett, at a tennis match at the Englewood Country Club. They were married in 1895. Though she and her husband had two sons, Jewett had already made herself well known in New York as a sculptor. She maintained a studio in New York up until the 1940s and exhibited at the Macbeth Galleries. In 1912, they purchased a summer cottage in Georgica and created an enclave that included Maud's studio and several small attached homes for both their sons and guests. The main house was nicknamed the Ink Pot because it resembled a colonial inkwell, while one of the smaller cottages, cottages was called the Blotter and another was called Pen Points. She continued to accept commissions for garden, garden sculptures, sundials, fountains, and portraits until the late 1940s. Her beautiful and simple eight-foot-high soldier and sailor's monument, uh, World War I, is in the green here at Hook Mill, and she based it on a classical Greek gravestone. And it's very beautiful, very simple, and very eloquent. Her studio had a view of Georgia Capon from the sloping lawn behind the ink pot. It was a gathering place for local artists, musicians, guild hall members, and friends from the Maidstone Club. Miss Jewett was a serious tennis player and golf enthusiast. She also taught drawing, painting, and sculpture classes to local students and summer colonists at her studio. It was always a busy place. 
Today, her most famous work is a small 10 and a quarter inch bronze sculpture of two young nude male dancers who stand on tiptoes facing each other. Their forms are idealized and elongated. They reach out to one another and grab their wrists, leaning back from each other as far as humanly possible. The feeling has a sort of art nouveau, uh, but certainly stronger art deco uh, quality about it. There's just enough space between their hands to have a blown glass crystal flute for flowers. The artist also designed a separate 12 inch diameter bronze shallow rim pool for the sculpture to sit on in the middle of the table. The edge of the reflecting pool is rimmed with several frogs. The casting is dated 1924, and we don't know how many were made, but I would say probably one appears on the auction market maybe once every two years. The artist's late daughter-in-law, Camilla Jewett, had both the sculpture and base on her dining room table, but the blown glass crystal vase had disappeared. Though a number of these sculptures were produced, I have never seen one that includes all three pieces. Maud Jewett was an inspiration to any number of students and people here in East Hampton, and we're happy that some of her sculptures are available for people to look at. If you have any more questions or questions for the curators, please contact the Historical Society.